I always felt we were going to have a successful season, Josh. I thought the only criteria would be would be how successful. Are you with me? I never ever felt in danger from early on that we wouldn't be a playoff team. I think we all believed that, you know, we we were the best team in the league or had the best players. Um, personally, I felt pressure um, just because I had a great spell here last time. From the early weeks, I had a look at the squad. I obviously, knew Mark Richards very well and he speak very highly of everybody. I seen the signings we made. And straight away, I felt we're going to win this league. Pretty much in the first week, I seen the quality, the gaffer, Liam, you know, the way they operate, their sort of methods. And straight away, I told a few friends and family, I said, we're going to win the league this season. We're going to get promoted. I mean, I've been here four or five years now, and every season there's been expectation because it's a big club for the level that it's at. And uh, with the signs of Gary Roberts and, and players like that, you know, the expectation rises. But I think the expectation that the gaffer put on us early on. Uh, we all knew that we needed to produce this season. I, th I think any team that that's, you know wants to get promoted or wants to do well, or you know any team in general, everybody wants to start, um, get the first win, score the first goal, um, get that out of the way, and obviously try and build and get some momentum going early on. So when we played, you know, the first away game at Bury, we knew it was going to be such a tough task because. Um, the, the manager that was in charge and they recruited you know, a lot of players in the summer um, and, and to be honest for the first 20-25 minutes I think we probably rode our luck. Yeah, we didn't start brilliant, I think the first half we were under the cosh conceded a few chances but we, yeah we kept we kept we kept the door shut they put us under a lot of pressure initially to where our backs were against the walls and we had to defend really well but that's the thing first game of the season it's just vital to try and get the three points I think probably if you look back on the game, and I might be wrong, the first half, I bet he was probably as big a batterer as we got in the rest of the season. Because I don't know how the scores were level at half time. I really, really don't. And we said to the players at half time, because we were trying to get the ball forward a bit quicker. We were trying to play in their half. We were trying to do things that we hadn't really done all pre-season because we knew Betty would come on to us very, very strong. What we also felt that he would be able to do was not keep up the pace of the game. Unfortunately for us, even when you look back on the goals of Perry, the J.O. goal and Mark Richards goal and that, you know, our quality did come through.
travelling support like we did, I think it was 1,200 on the day. It was a kickstart for the season that we all wanted. It was as if to say, yeah, we did come under pressure, but we took that, albeit with a bit of luck, at times, probably a lot of luck. But we certainly knew within that game that we had the players within the group that could win us football matches. You know, Leeds away is probably the biggest draw you can get other than the local derbies in, in that cup competition at the start of the season. And again, we went there full of confidence and I think that was a, a big, big moment in our season, even though it was so early on because it, I mean, we went there and we played a championship team off the park, you know, we was unlucky not to get the, the result in the end and we came away from there similar to Bury, full of confidence. We played them off the park and straight away we could see how good we were compared to a championship team. He can't get hold of it now, no, it's just a good in possession. You know, we're not really going, you know, Norris isn't really getting into the game at all. You know, from their point of view, they're actually passed the ball a bit on us now. Very nicely, here's Tolbert on the right. He's got Derrick just inside him, inside right channel. They'll play the return pass for the flying fullback. Great cross towards the back oh. post, header and a goal. And it's a fantastic goal for Chesterfield. Well worked, Tolbert involved. A fantastic cross into the penalty area. And the header down past Paddy Kenny. It was a pinpoint cross. And it was a pinpoint finish. And from that kind of range, that fell out of goal. There was no chance for the Leeds United goalkeeper. And Leeds United in the Capital One Cup first round find themselves one down. Sadie White. Left corner of the penalty here, back towards Brown. Lines up the oh. shot! Equalizer for Leeds! And Michael Brown, he only scores stunners! And that's one of them! We've had Leeds watch very, very closely in pre season and at the weekend. Oh. Here's Paul Lama, mistake at the back, three against one, edge of the penalty area, Don Paul and chance! Yeah. From the edge of the penalty area, low into the bottom left corner. We had a mistake for the, for the one of the goals, and um, it was a wonder strike for the, for the other goal. So you have to take it on the chin, and you know, you know, we didn't um, get downbeat, you know, about it. There was another game on Saturday coming up. Necessarily get a mass amount of goals, but our passing on the day was fantastic. Got the job done. It's a good run there, a chance here now. Looking on the ground, Christian and turning. Gary Roberts shots! And Gary Roberts gives Chesterfield the lead. It's a good breakaway goal. Nathan Smith clearance. Not done. We scored quite early on, which was great, and you know I think it settled everybody down. And again, it was a case of like you know trying to score more goals, and we didn't get the goal. I don't think the second goal till till quite late on, but it's it's always nice to get that second one. Chesterfield now get forward again here. Gary Roberts on the ball. Doyle and uh, the Richard are both with him. Roberts for Doyle. Owen Doyle with a shot, Owen with his legs in! And Owen Doyle makes it 2-0 to the Spyrites. Again, we played very well, we should have won comfortably. Um, unfortunately, some refereeing decisions on the day made it 2 2. But again, it keeps with the forward momentum you know, from the two games, home and away, getting a win and a draw. It kept everything positive and it kept our beat to one going. <laughs> Very, very well in, and 
you know, barring a couple of maybe dodgy refereeing decisions, and I gave a penalty away, probably got the win there as well, but it's, it's a good away point. Just, it was just a bit of a bizarre game, but again, um, we persevered and, and got the equaliser. And I think you know, it was, the draw was probably a fair result, but a game that we did play well in again. for both teams who both found some good early season form. Chesterfield have won twice and drawn once in their opening three matches. Southend United have won all three of theirs without even conceding a goal. It was a very exciting game against Southend. It was two evenly matched teams on the day. They was very competitive. It was definitely a battle. It's going to be Roberts to strike it. Oh, what a goal! Gary Roberts with a magnificent free kick. One nil. I expected us to go on, but they got back in the game. They were a good team. Chance here, Kevin Hurst has to be scored, and Freddie Eastwood has given Southend the equaliser. Ten minutes after Chesterfield took the lead, and I remember before the goal, I've had a shot. The keepers made a save. In for Morsi. Sam Morsi shots. Well saved by Dan Bentley once more, and Chesterfield have a corner kick. I remember the ball in, I remember him just leaping and he's attacked the ball so well. Everybody up on Nathan Smith. He's swinging ball in! <laughs> to win a game of football in the last kick of the game, sometimes it, 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 there's no better feeling. And um, I remember I, I'd, I'd, I'd been substituted, uh, we were obviously trying to go for the you know, get more strikes on the pitch and then I think the whole bench pretty much went onto the pitch or sort of down the touchline trying to catch Arman. But um, it's, it's great when you win a game in the last, you know, and it was a, such a you know brilliant, powerful header. Um, you know, it deserves to be a match win. Arman Nogmile has given Chesterfield the lead in stoppage time. And that surely is the winning goal this afternoon for the Spyrites. And it calls out all the uh, players, the subs, <laughs> staff celebrating in the corner. Um, you know, much to the delight of Phil Brown, who wasn't happy with it. He said it's if he won the won the league, but that's how much it meant to us. I wouldn't say you raise your game for for. Portsmouth or teams like that, but I think when when you get out on the field and you can see there's a full house, you know it adds to the adrenaline. You know you'd rather play in front of 17,000 than 2,000. <laughs> Fantastic travelling fans that were down there. Um, great home support as well. You got to say that. And again, we, you know, we um, it was a good first half. I think both teams had chances.
and a man sent off early doors for something very, you know, silly. then got harder to try and break them down where they did have 10 men because they weren't really coming at us. Uh, but once we got um, got the goal and we scored straight after, um, you know, it was it, it, it looked a comfortable win, but I, I do remember there was a lot of blocks in the in the box late on. Second half, I don't think they had a shot really, and uh, yeah, credit to Tendai, he got he got the winner. But I think our man came on with another important header uh, just to seal the game and uh, another massive moment in the season, even though it was so early on. The Aquiton game, they obviously had tactics to try and contain us, but because the pitch was so immaculate, we could just play our football, so if they wanted to sit behind the whole game and we could only win by one goal, then in my opinion, it's absolutely no problem. <laughs> for us and when you bring lads up with a football philosophy to pass and play and move and interchange position and, you know to all of a sudden ask them to bomb teams it's like saying everything I've told you is wrong everything I've told you is what I believe in and how the game should be played is wrong so we laboured you know fortunately for us that day we got over the line you know, but it was apparent from that day on that we weren't good at the other side of the game and certainly as we went forward, it was something that would be our Achilles heel for the rest of the season. Teams were coming and sort of setting up slightly differently. Um, we, we started to see that then. So, you know, it, it was up to us to, to find a way to break it down. And obviously it was, it was only it was a 1-0 win against Accrington, but, you know, three points vital. Wimbledon, I think they came and had a little go, you know, I forget the striker's name, but they created quite a few chances and uh, to keep another clean sheet and get two, two goals and the win, we just, you know, we carried on from where we set off, set off at the start of the season with, with two, two more good wins. Now Luke, a little back flick here and Michael Smith, Smith getting a second chance and twice denied by Tommy Lee. Over the bar from Mike Smith on the edge of the six yard box. Sam Hur getting caught there. George Franken in on goal here. Oh, what a save by the Chesterfield goalkeeper Tommy Lee. Oh, that's a good ball through. There's no flag. And a chance here for Mike Smith. Again denied by Tommy Lee. And then denied by Sam Hurd on the line. Oh, and he's into the back of the net for Sam Hurd. 
Sam Lerr gets his first goal of the season. So the, yeah, two you know two home games close together, um, another six points, and then I think people were, were then taking note that we you know we'd really made a strong start. Oxford away was was brilliant. You know we, we kept the ball really well. You know, we didn't create many chances, but I think the goal we got was was a, a nominee for goal of the season. Richie Humphries uh, down the left wing and. Yeah, it slotted it away lovely, and I think that was the day his, his son was born. So it was it was a fantastic day for Rich, and I, re I remember sitting in the changing room after the game actually and thinking, we've got a chance this season, you know, to go to Oxford and, and beat them one 0 comfortably. Yeah, I thought we've got a chance. Oxford away um, for me now will always be, uh, you know, a very special memory. Um, but my wife was was booked in to, to have our son um, on on the Friday, and we, I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to play or not, or to be honest, whether she was going to let me play or not. So yeah, when he arrived, um, you know on time um, on Friday and everything was absolutely fine um, you know later on in the afternoon wife said look you're going to go and play tomorrow you better speak to the manager so I spoke to the manager and he was he was happy that if I was fine then I then I'd be okay to play so I stayed with my wife at the hospital went home sort of late in the evening um, and traveled my best mate drove me down to the game on, on Saturday um, and again I think that was actually Looking, taking my own personal um, affection to the game out of it, I think it was a fantastic away performance. It was a top of the table clash at the time, and we were as dominant in that game, I think, as we were in any away game this season. I remember early on in my career, I was at Macclesfield and uh, I probably over celebrated a goal uh, against Accrington in a relegation battle. And then a minute later, they come up the other end and scored. So uh, since then, uh, whenever my team scores, I'm pleased inside, but uh, I just tend to walk away and have a little drink and uh, adjust my socks and whatnot. This is what I find quite difficult about football, because I look back on the Mansfield game here, and we didn't half play well. <laughs> we got beat one nil. Still Jay O'Shea, the drive comes in and Ryan! Jimmy Ryan shot, good save by Marriott. Yeah, the Mansfield game was literally attack versus defence. Pin them in, move the ball side to side, put quality in the box, dominate the midfield area, solid at the back. Pretty much did everything other than score that day. I don't think sometimes people realise how hard it is to get through mass defences with teams that play that way and defend their 18 yard box. And you've got to give Mansfield and every other team that do it respect because their game plan is to leave the stadium with something. Our game plan is to make sure they leave the stadium with what? Nothing. <laughs> Sometimes in football you don't always get what you deserve and this has been one of my learning curves because as a manager if you can sit down after the game to your players and say you've done your best today then you won't always win but if you can say to them them comments a lot of the time you'll win a lot more than you lose. Um, so the gaffer said he was going to throw me back in at, at Morecambe on, on the Saturday I was obviously very excited and, and after the first half I was feeling invincible but um, after that, it was uh, funny. He's got a 
football's got a funny way of, you know, making you crash back down to earth again, and, and that was certainly a, a big wake-up call for myself. to Doyle, great chance for the opening goal and Doyle scores it. Going Doyle on target after just five minutes. How do you explain Morecambe? How long is this take going to last? Morecambe on the other hand, most self-destructing is Dariqua. Right across goal for Book Sheffrey, it's 2-0. Doubling their lead after 11 minutes. Gary McSheffrey virtually passed that into the net after good work from Dariqua. We wanted the reaction after the Mansfield in the first half, dominated, scored three goals. Doyle, one challenge, the traffic, still going though, Doyle, oh, how has he done that? He's just taken on the walk of defence and won. And 23 minutes in, Chesterfield looking good for the win, they're 3-0 up already. The 3 up at half time away, played well, great goals. Half time we said more of the same, you know, the gaffer said, don't rest on your laurels, we'll need to be on his metal. And then for them to get a goal just after half time, I mean, we should have dealt with it. Going to hit back straight away. Let's pass into the path of Edison. It's actually bounced off him and into the net. My word. I think, you know, when we look back on games like the Liverpool versus AC Milan game, how do you explain it? I think sometimes you can't. And then you'll watch the DVD and it makes you feel 20 times worse than you felt before you watched it, if that's possible. It hurt me, I'd say. Lost championship playoff finals, um, but I've never felt so low as I did after that game. Williams over this free kick is delivered in, and it's been touched in, and Morecambe's comeback is complete. When you look for excuses, you offer them up, and they're the most feeble ones in the world. I think everyone's seen by the way he and Everett finishes the season for us, how lucky we are to have him. I think that's just a, a common denominator. But Ian needed to go through a period of games to find his feet again, not find his form to find his feet because he'd been out for so long. Time feeling on top of the world, and then all of a sudden to, to be three 0 up and lose four three, it hurt me. Everyone that knows me as a person, as a player, I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, I'm a winner. I want to win, and to to throw away a three goal lead, my, the first time I think I've done that in my career, uh, and to be my first game back was a, a big blow to myself personally and to the club. Um, and I had to ask myself a lot of questions after that game. Mansfield, the way you'll get put under as much pressure as you'll get put under at any other League Two ground, you know. And we went there on the Tuesday night amidst a barrage of criticism about what we lacked, about some of the things that come out of other places about us that were soft, that we don't have an underbelly for a fight, and all these things that you have as a manager have to listen to. And for me, I look back on last season as probably one of our best performances of the season, without a doubt, because to go there in a the derby match. Not only to win the game, but to stand up like the players did after the defeat on the Saturday. I couldn't speak highly enough of them all. To get the goal in the manner we did, and I think it was Gary McSheffrey popped up with a little tapping at the end. And you know, it's important. We needed a big result. I remember the gaffer saying before the game, we need a result today, and, and we did that, and that's testament to the lads. 
Porter on the goalkeeper, going to get it. It's thrown from Ed Sheffrey. Oh, 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 Chesterfield with 19 minutes to go in this game of taking the lead. Porter did the bit. It was a cross on the right hand side. Porter did just enough. The ball fell loose to McSheffrey, adjacent to the penalty spot. There was no defenders back. There were no goalkeepers back. He had the easiest task of his career to roll the ball in to make it Mansfield nil, Chesterfield one. I think the JPT was always a competition where we could use the squad, but. If you looked at our squad at the start of the season, you'd have said, Jesus, they've got some good players. Um, whether you're in the team or out of the team, um, we had a very good squad and we utilised that early on in the competition. And After the Mansfield game, it was a, a great platform for us to go on and, and do better in the tournament. Fleetwood game as well, in my opinion, was a good indication of where we were at. Because again, there was another team who sort of was predicted to be up with us. For 90 minutes, we, we dominated them again. Well, here's Tendai Derrick on the right-hand side, the ball being given away. Derrick was away, might strike it, he does! It's a oh. good shot! It's a good save as well, though, from the Fleetwood goalkeeper. 54 minutes in, it's going to be a corner taken by Richie Humphries. He's not a towards the goal! In. It's in the back of the net! And it's Liam Cooper, the man who's going to claim it. Can Tommy Lee save this one? The all important one. Hughes hits it. Over the bar! Over the bar from Jeff Hughes. It was a game that we probably would like to have seen out, but again, you know, things happen in football. You know, there's always late goals. Um, you never want them to be against you when you're winning, obviously, but, but it happens. And, you know, um, I think that was a, a draw away at Fleetwood and a draw away at Rochdale. Um, you know, they're not bad results. Brown lips it into the penalty area here for. A chance for John Parkin who hits it back yes, in yes, yes, again. And they scored at the end if you remember excellent play from John Parkin. You know, which is fair enough, he's a good striker and they managed to get the draw. But again, we sort of felt if this is the best the league's got to offer, then we've got nothing to worry about. Burton's probably the, one of the biggest games that stuck out for me last season. Um, obviously, I'd been back in the team for three games. My first three games back was Morecambe, Mansfield, and then Fleetwood. Um, I can just remember the manager pulling me on the Friday and saying, "Listen, up, Hurdy and Coops have been on fire this season. Um, you know, obviously, the last three games haven't you haven't been how we see you should be. Um, so I'm going to leave you out." Chance there for Burton, and it's McGurk now on the attack once more, and McGurk through the defenders. And McGurk has put Chess put to Burton Albion in a goal up here at the Proact Stadium. Adam McGurk, ten minutes in. That again was hard to take for me, uh, but one I understood. I understood the decision and I took it like a man. And, and it, you know, a few alarm bells went off in my head and said, you know, you, you need to knuckle down here and get yourself back to how how you believe you should be playing. <laughs> We just didn't get going all game and credit to them, they played well, they got the goals and I seem to remember thinking after the game, we need a win now. Left to Roberts to chase. Roberts crossed towards the six yard box. Only scores Morsi. Then Morsi turned his shoot to camp. And again, Morsi just can't park and he's on target. Think about the Robble who was pushing uh, side past Devy. Robble's shot towards goal. What a save there from Tommy Lee. This ball to O'Neill shot and he's got in. 1 0 to York City. Towards the goal line. And it's in the goal. It's the second goal for York City. Out of absolutely nowhere. Finding ourselves 2-0 um, down um, after being getting, after getting beat off Burton wasn't obviously ideal. Two bad goals really, the guy scored from 30 yards and then the second one was a set piece, remember it clearly. Um, but we deserved to get something out of that game and 
when a team has the team spirit and the belief that we've got, we just keep going for 90 minutes and, and that paid dividend in the end with a, a great comeback. chances in a game where we should have won but we took a lot from that because 2 nil down you can easily put your head down and say it's not going to be our day so to get the point is a very valuable point things just weren't going right for us um, it wasn't from the lack of trying it was just for whatever reason we weren't getting the results we we sometimes deserve Very disappointing for me to take the injury. Um, it was a hard tackle. The guys come home, come over me with a lot of excess force, and I tried to cleanly win the ball. And he felt the inside of me and shake, and straight away I knew something's not right here. Um, the physio jam came on, stood up, and it felt as if my knee was going to pop. So it was a very frustrating day. It was a stonewall penalty. I think everyone on the pitch thought it was. The goalkeeper probably thought it was. I thought he probably thought it was going, but you know, that's the way it goes. The referee phoned me on the Monday, and he apologised for not giving the penalty. He said he consulted the linesman. The linesman didn't feel it was a penalty. He's watched it over again. It is a penalty and a sending off. He said, but I also should warn you, Paul. I should have sent you off for your behaviour after it. Well, if you give the penalty, referee, I don't misbehave. <laughs> Doyle. To a cross in the end rather than a shot it's saved by the legs of the goalkeeper. Doyle again. And by Dan Delay. Tipping shot which is pushed away by Milden Hall. I think we were a victim of, of his own success early on in the season. To, I think we had the best start the club's had in years. And then, as soon as a few bad results do come, you know, people do start to feel the pressure a little bit. Not so much the players and the staff, but the fans get a little bit edgy and rightly so. You know, we didn't perform in, in those games, but we bounced back and, and that was key. Key throughout the season, I keep mentioning it, but it was key. Scunthorpe at home was another disappointing result. You know, it was a recurring theme in this little spell of the season. With a penalty, a mistake by the defender, Richard. Oh, Richards gives Chesterfield an early lead. Jamie Devitt with a chance. Good effort from this number 16. Good save by Sam Slocum. That late goal took the wind out of our sails a bit. We the, we deserve to win the game. We dominated the game. Ball goes back post and Scunthorpe have got the goal they were looking for. And that happened to us a couple of times. Whether it was a teams were sniffing it after the Morecambe away game, you know they were probably saying just to feel they got a soft underbelly if you. If you can get at them and get to them, they'll, they'll crumble sort of thing. And you could sense that at times we were becoming nervous towards the end of games, especially when we were winning 1-0. Yeah, yeah. I 
I remember thinking that after I think Gary scored 66 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, 67 minutes down into the cop. I was standing on the sidelines and it was lashing down with rain. It was about 65 minutes and I was thinking, please God, no. Please God, no, because it happens. It's football, we will never, ever change it. This afternoon's game forgets League 4 ball together and League play sings. It's the first round of the FA Cup this afternoon and it's Chesterfield versus non-league Daventry Town. It was, it, it was a knife-edge performance that we were never, ever in control of the game. We were never, ever comfortable with. Right. Holton in space, Ross Holton goes past Cooper, goes past two. Still Ross Holton with the shots. Chesterfield has really plenty to do here. Tommy Lee comes down to make the punch, the header back in. Dolman with a chance. It's blocked by the Chesterfield defence, Hurd gets it away. Becky tracks him all the way, Talbot's got possession though. Talbot gets the cross in, and the header there at point blank ready by Richards. Driven back across the goal by McSheffrey. And Daventry survived their worst scare of the game so far. Robinson puts it over the top, Lorraine now. Tom Lorraine in with a chance here. Hurd comes across, Lorraine with the shot. And just wide of the Chesterfield goal. Against Daventry, we played with two lads up front. We should have played with one. Daventry come and had a right good go at us. They come on to us, we could have passed through them at will, but we'd set up the wrong way. And you look back as a manager and go, I got that wrong. Back in with Ross Holton, Holton gets the better of it. And chance again here now as uh, Daventry get forward. The ball cut back there from Confio. And Adam Confio goes down in the area. The block eventually coming in as Ross Holton has a go. Gary Roberts with the ball in for Nandrele, arriving at the back of Banks. And Nandrele couldn't finish and neither could Doyle. And I remember thinking to myself on the sidelines, and I don't mind saying it, I should change to one up front. That would have gone down well for me. <laughs> Supporters don't influence managers' decisions. He did that day because I felt I couldn't change. If I'd have gone to one up top and we'd have lost the game, I would have been absolutely hammered. The ball comes in from O'Shea, Everton arriving, and it's a goal from Gary Roberts! Gary Roberts in at the back post, and finally, Chesterfield going from... And Ryan with the drive, it's took a deflection, and he's got into the net anyway. Jimmy Ryan with the drive, it was deflected, I think, of Adam Conti, the defender, but it's finished up in the back of the net and Jimmy Ryan will take the credit for that. We dominated Rochdale. Rochdale were obviously one of the better teams in the league. Um, and after that game, I think even Keith Hill admitted that we were the best team. Uh, we dominated them for large spells and no other team had done that to them. And Oli Banks is the scorer in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Roberts again now, only Nondule in the area. Gary Roberts in for Nondule! <laughs> Roberts now has a good ball for Banks. Oli Banks makes it 3 0 to the Spyrites and doubles his goal tally for the season. Uh, it was a massive shot in the aisle for us and a big confidence boost going into probably the Christmas period. Torquay away was a was was pivotal in getting three points on the board again, um, which we hadn't had for a while. Um, and personally, for me, yeah, it was, it was my 600th league game, and um, you know the manager made me captain for the day, which was a fantastic honour. And um, you know, no better way to to enjoy that bus ride home than taking three points back up the road. Humphreys, Humphreys delivers the cross, and Oli Banks has it on the edge of the box. He shoots, and he scored. Oli Banks has scored for Chesterfield. We were finding out that um, sometimes we might have to change the way we play a little bit. Um, never going away from our, uh, our ethos of, of, of wanting to keep the ball and play the right way. Well, it makes up at the back, number 17, Jack McClaw gives Armand a chance, Armand with the shot, and he turns to O'Shea, and O'Shea shoots! Can he get it in the second attempt, and he's scored! Jay O'Shea has scored! I mean, it's a game that I'll live in my memory because it was my 200 for the club. 
and uh, the gaffer allowed me to be captain that day. So it's that was a special game for me. It was a confident performance from the team, 2-0 at home. You know, you can't ask for anything more. This time, and the check it is Oli Banks. It's another goal for Oli Banks. He can't stop scoring at the moment. Not really. to Ryan. Ryan passed one, Ryan's going towards the penalty area. Ryan's still going, unfortunately, uh, he only finds Matt Duke, that's as far as best break came from Jimmy Ryan. A slight challenge there from Ferdinand, which had Ryan gone down, may well have resulted in a free kick, but Ryan elected to shoot. At the time, A.D. Boothroyd scramble in Northampton for the lad. They're entitled to come to any ground and do what they do. But in terms of an advertisement for football, to know. Richards can turn. Richard the shot takes a deflection, which will only find Matt Duke. Only find Matt Duke in the Northampton goal. You know, if you bring kids in and we want them to come and watch the game and bring them back, they'd have all been asleep. I'd say to you next time, Dad, spare me the pain, I'll stay in at home and play on the Xbox. We all have a job and a duty to make people go home and go, what a game that was. And I think for us as a club, I can honestly say, I never go away from home. I never want to set up to be hard to beat. I want our supporters to travel and think to themselves, we're going to have a go. We won't win all the time, but we'll have a go. It's Matt Duke with a goal kick for Northampton. Suspect next time it's in the air, the referee will blow the whistle. Full time here at the Pro Act. Chesterfield nil, Northampton Town nil. Been a frustrating night for the Sparrows. deliver for Newport. It's a dangerous one and the header is flicked in by Danny Crow and what a start for Newport. It was very difficult, the pitch was awful. Um, thought again we played really well, we dominated the game with large spells, obviously considered a sloppy goal early on. It's tempted Pidgeley to come and the former Chelsea man didn't get there and Jimmy Ryan has a tap in. We got back in the game and there was only one team going to go on and win it. Washington is behind Cooper and Liam Cooper brings him down. It's a penalty to Newport and it's going to be a red card for Liam Cooper for denying the goal scoring opportunity. Adam Chapman to restore Newport's lead, which he does. A uh, momentary lapse of con concentration from, from us at the back and it shows you, how, you know, one decision can change the course of a game and Coop's getting sent off and the penalty being given, it was, you know, it was difficult to come back from that. Newport looking still for the goal that would surely wrap this one up. Washington, the tease and torment once more, it's a brilliant save, but the rebound is put away by Andy Sandell and that will surely do it for Newport. Lead it brilliantly to make the save. But he couldn't get up to deny Sandell, and it's 3-1 Newport. With the flick on, and suddenly it's Richard who's in. Chesterfield, have hope. Did we make mistakes in the game? Yeah, that's where your match analysis comes in. You sit down, you say, next time, what should we do better? And that's where you take something out of a game where you've lost, to think, yeah, we've lost, but maybe we should do something better. Good header into the path of Roberts, then O'Shea trying to link up with him. Roberts in again, and Deniqua! Sendai Deniqua, back in the start 11, and back with the goals. The near post, and it's gone in. Kevin Hurst with the cross in for Straker, and has scored a second. When you watch the game again, you know, in the second half, we got a head of steam up that determined we were the strongest team and we were the best team. Still Ryan going, looks for the drive and no delay. Coming in at the back there, couldn't quite connect with it. Oh, and the header was a good 
run from Ruth Talbot. Still Banks with the drive. Tendai Garukwa now, there's two in the penalty area. Garukwa's ball it. Nine release header. Well saved by Dan Bentley. What a good save that was. Oh, well saved. Well saved by Tommy Lee. Southampton with a real chance here. And Kevin Hurst with the shot. And Kevin Hurst has scored what surely now is the winning goal for Southampton United. One of the things that disappoints me now, I've had two goals at the FA Cup and I've been knocked out in the second round both times. You know, as a club, as a manager, I want to have an FA Cup run. I want us to go and travel away with massive support. I want us to have them big teams out that other teams have. And sometimes you get a little bit jealous of the fact of that rather than the actual being knocked out. Now play to Mellon. Mellon plays it into the penalty area. Phyllis goes to time and space. And he's found the back of the Chesterfield net after 19 minutes. Well, now plays it to the right hand side of the penalty area here for Drew Talbot. Talbot's first time ball is a bad. He finds Ted Dandere who knocks it down and it's in the back of the Oldham net. It seemed to take an absolute age to get there. It was a brilliant first time cross from Drew Talbot. They've got a good team for that for that division and, and we did well. You know, uh, to, to go to penalties and then win on penalties in the JPT is always nice. And uh, just hearing one Oldham fan to our right hand side as well, the immortal words Tommy Lee always plays well against us. <laughs> Rooney steps up, a couple of shuffles, hits it, yeah. bottom corner scores. Richard steps up, Mark Richard scores it! Phyllis Kirk, he wants to get on with this quickly, steps up Phyllis Kirk, hits it, Lee saves it with his legs! Tommy Lee makes a save! You've just got to guess, I mean, in penalties it's pure luck, some players can go left, they go right, they can go anywhere, so go nice and early, and with a bit of luck you'll, you'll get something on it. Owen Doyle then, the next man up, hits it, oh it squirms in! Oh my word, it squirmed in. Hit, oh, scored, bottom corner. That was a good penalty from Clark Harris. Jimmy Ryan, arguably Chesterfield's player of the season so far. Ryan steps up and puts the ball home. Arms high in the air, bouncing up and down. Tarkovsky hits it, and it's an absolutely stunning penalty to be fair to James Tarkovsky. Here's Ollie Banks, this is a massive penalty. Takes it quickly, Banks is up and he's saved, and he rushed it. Ollie Banks rushed that one. Corey Smith, can Tommy Lee put Chesterfield back in this again? Smith yeah! scores. McSheffrey, can he keep Chesterfield in this shootout? He has. It's a great penalty. Grounds against Lee. Oh, back of the net from Johnny Grounds, but the sigh there from me was because Tommy Lee was an inch away. Can Tendai de Ricker keep Chesterfield in the JPT? He can. It's a lovely composed bottom corner finish from de Ricker. Rogers against Lee this time. Roger steps up, Lee saved it with his legs! Tommy Lee has saved it! Drew Talbot, of course, a striker once before, can he score now? Talbot, he's done it! And Chesterfield have knocked all the out of the JPT! They will be the ones playing in the two legs against Fleetwood Town for a place at Wembley! I did ever so well, he didn't let anybody down whenever he came to play. Um, not only him, but there's other players, Togs as well. Um, it was that period where I think himself and Togs got more involved. And over that December period where the weather wasn't great and the pitches weren't great, we had to find another way of winning. Doyle, chance for Owen Doyle. Doyle on for Richards. Still not Richards in the area. Appealed for a penalty and the lineman flagged it. Richards with the penalty in the corner from Mark Richards. It's goal number five for the Chesterfield striker this season. And Chesterfield with just a few minutes of half time take a 2 0 lead. Brownie came in and scored the goal and then unfortunately got sent off. It was never a sending off as it was later proved. But yeah, 2 0, I think we won with 10 men for 45 minutes. Pretty much great win. Oh, he's close to that. Oh, the chance here now for. 
Lavery who goes down on the edge of the area and the penalty is given by referee Andy Haynes. The lineman's flag is also signaling the penalty. And what's going to happen here now? Cleveland supporters watching the ascending off here. by Tommy Lee, puts it around the post. Curly Hound that plays that way in, and the header is well saved again by Tommy Lee. Tommy gets the advantage of it, but now O'Shea with a chance. Tries to curl it! Good effort from Jay O'Shea, and a good save from the Plymouth goalkeeper, Luke McCormick. Exeter face Chesterfield in League Two with the visitors knowing victory will take them top of the table. Exeter away was a really important um, result for us just before Christmas. Um, away from home getting three points. Great one. Well that's a teasing cross. And Kriziak couldn't take any chances with that one. Important to get the win for everybody. And to see us ourselves at top of the league at Christmas is, is fantastic and not only that the the manager said if we didn't win that game, the Christmas doom was getting cancelled. So when you've arranged that, <laughs> the pressure was on massively. So to go there and win was, was great. Chesterfield had plenty of corners in the first half, which they weren't able to produce anything from. But their first one in the second period has bought the opening goal, and Ollie Banks has got it. Very professional performance. Ollie Banks got the, the first, and then I think Matt Richards got the winner. And, to, go, to get two goals down there just before his Christmas party as well was, was nice. Royal. Royal Quack. Nice. Banks involved. Richards. Is this two? It is. What a wonderfully crafted goal from Chesterfield. We had a, a few drinks down there, you know, after the game. I think uh, you need to do that, you know, it's a long season. And to see us top of the league at Christmas was was brilliant and the lads you know cheered at home singing Chesterfield songs it was it was a great day and one that I remember you've got to give lads every now and again a little bit of rope and hope they don't hang themselves you know because it can't be I can't hit them with a stick every day <laughs> I think after being at one club for 12 years and um, you know when the fixtures came out obviously looked at um, when we'd be playing Hartlepool and it was Boxing Day at, at, uh, at the Pro Act, so it was a great fixture. And it was a bit weird, obviously, playing against lads you, you can share dressing with for a long, long time. Can he get a right in the back? Dominey! Well, heading off the line! Awkward there for Sam Hurd and a chance here for James Poole who goes down in the penalty area and referee Gary Sutton points to the spot. <laughs> Dolan's header forward once more and a drive there. Well saved by Tommy Lee. I think it was Luke James with the strike. It was probably a fair result on the day, actually. I don't think we did enough to win the game, and I think they had a, Tommy made a really good save late on. So, um, a fair result, and I say another point that, that goes towards your total. <laughs> it was a difficult game because Hurdy got sent off. Um, we somehow managed to, to grind the draw out. We were behind or in front with 10 men, and then they equalised but managed to, to get a draw, which Prove vital towards the end of the season. Good pull with ball by a go-go taken by Murphy. And I think that's outside the area, isn't it? I think it's going to be a free kick. The referee 
has signalled the free kick and he's also sending off Sam Hurd. A good ball from Humphreys with the outside of the boot. Shanta Smith to cross here, which he does. Richards didn't make a proper contact on it. It feels for handball in the area, I think. And the referee signals a penalty this time for Chesterfield. Oh, he's got it in the corner. Chesterfield have the lead. I'm not so sure, you know, it wasn't right in the corner, it was just above my head, but yeah, it did, it, did, it did strike it well, and sometimes, you know, you've got to hold your hands up and say, yeah, good strike. You know, I just like playing games, I don't like being games being called off because you have to catch up and they become a Tuesday night game. And you don't want a million Tuesday night games when you're going for promotion because games become a lot more difficult to get over. I think it was frustrating. Um, we wanted to play, especially I was suspended. I had five yellow cards at that point, so my suspension was dragging on and dragging on. I just wanted to play again. Jay O'Shea taking on the defence. Gets the cross in this time. And he... Oh, and Roberts! Gary Roberts at the back post! <laughs> Words can't describe how I felt being back on the pitch amongst my teammates and it's a fantastic performance. Like you say, very, a very good team, good passing team like ourselves. But we dominated them on the day. Well done, Sam Morsi. Now a shot for O'Shea. O'Shea to drive on! Oh, that's a brilliant goal! And Jay O'Shea! have a two quick managers after the game and Flick is coming after the game and he was very complimentary to us about coming and having a go at us. He said we didn't want to come and get behind the ball, we'd come and have a go at you. We won't be doing that next time we come here. Good ball for O'Shea, sets Gordon away here. Dan Gordon, the new signing from Molly Batch, can he crown him with a goal? He's looking on to his right foot. Saved by Jensen, but he's got it to the back of the net. Dan Gordon! Dan Gardner made his debut, come on, you know, and I, I just remember thinking to myself, we're good, we're good, we're good enough to get, we're good enough to win this league, we're good enough to see it out, even though you still know, we'll still have bad days. Wonderful ball out wide and a great first touch from Straker, he's in behind Chesterfield, Drew Talbot can't get near him, and he puts it on a plate for Kevin Hurst. South end away was probably one of the three or four occasions that we just didn't turn up. So patient with it, South End through their last game, 1-1 one, one away at Plymouth. But they're bursting through here. Real chance for Leonard. He does it all by himself to make it 2-0. Again, South End have it over on as simple as that. Um, they seem to score with every shot they had, whereas we were missing chance after chance. Well, but calls in. It could be 3-0. It is. What an outstanding finish from Barry Court. Credit to them there, they've got a manager who's confident and he instilled that in his players that day and, you know, we could have been out there now still and we, we wouldn't have scored. Top scorer last season, top scorer this season, it's Mark Richards, wide of the post and I think Bentley got a touch on it. We had a number of chances that day, but unfortunately they took their chances and we didn't take ours so it looked like an emphatic win for them but on another day um, the score could have been reversed. Surely! The 
referee singles the goal. Rochdale at home, from a personal point of view, was probably one of my most disappointing games of the season. You know, to, to play as well as we did up until stoppage time and then concede two late goals. It, it is, it's the worst way to, to, to lose, even though we didn't lose, we drew. It felt like a loss after the game. I think Tommy Lee is the best lower league keeper, bar not. But unfortunately, he doesn't have a 100% range of catching crosses. <laughs> Henderson gets the goal for Rochdale. The two minutes were really sickening and again it was a feeling of sort of we let people down in the day because sometimes you have to be stronger and you have to defend a little bit better as a team. Once more and he's got it to the back of the net. Rochdale have got an equaliser right at the net. It's Chesterfield 2, Rochdale 2. But then again, the staff were excellent in saying, OK, you can't afford to concede like that. But the positives, we've just battered a rival. For 91 minutes, it was a perfect performance. So we really took the positives from that. And there was really good. I remember Lee Richardson coming in and sort of saying, look, you've got to take the positives from that. And that was really big in the player's psyche more than anything. Liam Richardson. Um, when I was going through the, the difficult spells at the start of the season, came to me one day and said, you know, come the end of the season, you'll be the one lifting that trophy. Just believe in yourself and believe in the rest of the lads because it's going to happen. I think it was one of the coldest times I've ever been on a football pitch. Um, the lads came in at half time and just genuine, genuinely shivering. Darren Carter scores right in the corner in Northampton leads. We were disappointed with the, the Rochdale result and um, it just took a lot of character to get through that day in them conditions. To get on with it quickly here, this is Gardner. Try and flash it across. How on earth has he managed to squeeze it in there? Chesterfield back level. They got on with it quickly, Roberts in towards Gardner, and he has smashed it into the net beyond Jake. Oh, it's awkward. And this is Roberts, as the ball gets stuck in the mud there in that puddle. Roberts, oh, it's in! Terrific technique. Gary Roberts gives Chesterfield the lead for the first time this afternoon. Really is difficult to play on now. It's Widdowson's delivery, really good one. Scramble in there. Is it to be for Northampton? Somehow Chesterfield have got it away. There were some great blocks and tackles going on, and um, you know, good clearances on, like I say, on difficult uh, surface. So you know, one of those days where you don't mind it being cold because it was a great victory for us. Nandrie is in. He's wrapped it up for Chesterfield. That should be that, all three points with three minutes to go. Again, we had really good support. You know, I felt last season, you know, there were certain games that our supporters, in my opinion, really showed quality. You know, some of the away, away supports we had at times was, was fantastic and they played the part. with Chesterfield. Especially here at Vivian Presence. And a chance for the visitors to take the lead and they have done. What a start. Two minutes, Owen Doyle. Coming back from the York game, I certainly felt it was a spell in the first half where we were a little bit special with some of our, some of our play. Sent back in dangerously from Banks. And he's in towards Gary Roberts. Somehow Pope has kept it out. Headed away. A chance for Chesterfield to break it. It's 
Real pace being shown by Gardner. And looks to thread it through for Roberts. Oh, how about that? For a goal on the counter. Chesterfield make it 2 0 from one end to the other. Gary Roberts finishing it off. We sent a little message out to the rest of the league that you know we're going to play teams and away from home we're going to win, and we did that. And I'm sure that that did send a few shockwaves to the to the other teams near the top of the table. This arose with the game I was looking forward to because previously I got injured, um, so sort of playing them again. I was you know wanted to set the record straight, get a win. Um, it was a professional performance, it was my first goal for the club, which I was delighted with on a personal level. Bristol Rovers certainly have the hope of the hand, but it's Chesterfield with the up hand here at the moment as Owen Doyle plays the ball into the area, and Morsi! <laughs> Gary Roberts is the deep boy, and Sam Morsi puts the ball into the back of the net on five minutes to give Chesterfield the early lead. Looking to get the cross in, which he does. And Mohammed was in there looking to make the challenge, making the header, but uh, perfectly enough. This is Matt Harold on the ball. Brown tries to curl one. Oh, he scored. The left back has put it into the top corner. And Bristol Rovers are level. Bristol Rovers at home was important because, like you say, if you want to win league, you need to win games in bunches. And, and I think that was a, the third on the bounce. And it was a comfortable performance. Roberts. Oh, he's escaped the defender there, Gary Roberts, looking to get the cross in now. In deep, and a goal for Chesterfield! Ollie Banks puts the Spyrites back in front. Excellent goal for the Spyrites. Oh, Parks is robbed there by Gary Roberts. A chance here, great chance for Doyle! Oh, no, in Doyle! In the first minute of the second half! That's given Chesterfield a 3-1 lead! short to uh, Brown, that must have been offside because uh, the ball comes in, it's in, the goal is in, but surely it's offside, it must have been, yeah, yeah. The corner, it had to be, I said that at the time. Yeah. We were full of confidence, um, I remember myself personally, I felt I felt great, I felt like I was back to, to my old self and we were going to have a right go at this now. Roberts with the free kick, uh, looking at the header, it's hit, yes, 1-0, yeah. Ian Everett has bungled that ball in. It was a free kick from Roberts on the left-hand side. It took a couple of ricochets. It seemed to roll down Ian Everett's leg. Watching for ball into the middle. Oh, and uh, makes up at the back. The ball comes to Dan Gardner. Now is Sam Morsi. Shooting opportunity. Two now. Oh, Sam Morsi. Oh, 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 to get two early goals, myself and Sammy, and from then on the game was over really. We dominated the game in large spells and never looked in any trouble. Roberts pointing uh, where he wants his uh, colleagues to go to. And a brilliant, oh, and a goal does come in there for Fleetwood. They have scored this time. It is David Ball that scored a header. The second half against against Fleetwood, you know, coming out at 2-1, um, thought that they were going to come at us, but I thought we were very, very strong and resilient in what we were doing. And, and then Jimmy Ryan scores a fantastic goal. Um, to put us 3-1 up in the tie. Oh, no. Ball clearance comes to Jimmy Ryan, gets a shot in. Oh, what a goal! Oh, what a goal! Jimmy Ryan! Oh, Jimmy Ryan! Oh, that was a mistake, a bad mistake in the back by Fleetwood. The ball fell to Jimmy Ryan. And do you know what he thought? I'll oh, have a pop, he shot, and the goalkeeper died to his right, and the ball curved in at the far post. It's Fleetwood 1, Chesterfield 3. Pop away again. Uh, uh, I forgot to pack my goal gloves that day again. 
They're on the attack here. Ball played in towards Paddy Madden. Gets the shot away. It's been saved by the goalkeeper. It's been put in by Sam Whittle. It was an unfortunate error from Tommy, who's been absolutely sensational all season and has kept us in the game a number of times. Um, but it was just unfortunate. It, just, it was windy, hit a bit of a bubble, and Sam Whittle's tapped it in. Humphries. He to look to latch onto this, he's gone down. Referee's given the penalty. Ryan <laughs> Doyle with the opportunity into the corner. What a good penalty. Celebrate to the away fans through the netting. It's important for us to go there and, and put, our, put our stamp on the game and, and show them what we're all about. I think we did that. I think we, we again dominated for large spells and I think they came away thankful for a point. Um, obviously the game after that talkie at home was a potential bat banana skin with what was, was coming but again we showed what we're about and, and managed to grind out a, a very good victory. Ryan losing out there to uh, talkie number 17, show me a good win. Good win now as talkie here, Chesterfield on the break! And Goodwin scores! Chesterfield caught cold on the break there. Torquay at home was, was a, a fantastic win. To go a goal down again, we bounced back. We'd done it all season. You know, it was a recurring theme towards the end of the season. Now that We did take knocks, but we did get results and, and Torquay was, was no exception. Not a good kick out and a real chance now for Doyle. Doyle shot! And a gift for Chesterfield puts them back in the game. Cooper advancing forward here, the ball going through, Cooper continuing his run, and a shot by O'Shea! Oh, he's got it eventually from Jay O'Shea! With ten minutes remaining, Chesterfield take the lead! And we're just coming into that last minute now, as the ball is played forward by Tommy Lee. Non will lay underneath it, wins the header. Ryan lays it out wide for Roberts. Roberts with the ball into O'Shea. O'Shea in tons of space. And Jay O'Shea sealed in for Chesterfield in stoppage time. It's a difficult game because it, it's, you're not really sure how to approach it. But I think in the first half, it was probably the best we played all season. Little flick on and a chance here again for Chesterfield. The drive comes in, oh, good save. The Riqua back to O'Shea. O'Shea with a shooting chance. And saved by Maxwell. Through to Roberts, Jay O'Shea made a great run. It's a good ball from Roberts. O'Shea with the shot. Don't know if he'll uh, do anything about that in the end, but Richards with a chance here. Richards now lifts it over the keeper and wide of the people goal. You know, I thought first half we were absolutely magnificent. I felt it was as good as we've played since I've been here. <laughs> Still Matt Hughes. A chance here again now. Jamil Matt and finally John Parkin. Gives Fleetwood the lead in the final minute of the 90. Well, amazingly, there are six minutes of added time to play here. Six minutes of added time. I don't know where referee David Webb's got that from, but six minutes is a lot. Then he put six minutes up, or whatever he put up, seven minutes, was it? You know, Big John scored, and wow, what the longest six or seven minutes of my life. What a feeling, it was one of the best feelings I've ever had. I've been playing for 20 years now professionally and never never been to Wembley, never got close to getting to Wembley. So when that final whistle went, um, I must say it was one of the happiest of times on a football pitch for myself.
a horrible team to play against. Horrible team to play against. Um, but on the day, we didn't deserve anything from the game. And you know, as you say, what a nil-nil draw. We would have took that and went back. Here to Leclerc. Shipped into the penalty area. Appeals for handball against Ian Evert. And the referee points to the spot. Managed to nick a, a very dodgy penalty that got a member it clearly hit my hand and it was a yard away. I couldn't have done anything about it. It's Max Kretschmar from the spot, straight down the middle. For whatever reason, again, we struggled to break him down. Um, we didn't create the chances we, we normally do. Free kick comes over, free header. And it's into the net, but the flag's up, it won't count. Ian Effort with a header. We had to hold our hands up on the day and say that isn't good enough. Uh, we talked about it afterwards and we could only apologise because, you know, the, the, the standards we set ourselves, that game at Wickham was not good enough. And that kick from Tommy Lee has bounced over Deering's head. Gary Roberts left hand side the penalty area. It's a good ball across it to the right hand side. It's a strike oh, and no. it's a goal from Dan Gardner. It is a stunning, blistering counter attack from Chesterfield. The ball lumped forward by Tommy Lee. It bounced over Deering's head, who completely misread it. It came to Gary Roberts, whose ball was so beautifully crafted, was so wonderfully envisioned that it could well have been a Picasso painting. And now it's Chance Rowan Doyle around the back as well for a loop ball from Molly Banks. This has come from nothing. Goal for two. Yes! It's 2 0. This is absolutely devastating stuff. And it's cleared away, but only as far as Banks on the edge of the penalty area. Molly Banks sets himself right foot. It's, yes! it's 3 0. It's an absolutely stunning finish, Molly Banks. And this is a Cheltenham Town side absolutely collapsing. In swing, goes into the penalty area, towards the yes! back yes, again, it's 4-0, this is absolutely unbelievable stuff, it's Liam Cooper with a glancing header into the back of the net. It was probably the best seven minutes I've ever played in, in as a team member it was, it was fast flowing football and we scored some fantastic goals and it just, it killed the game completely and uh, it was, it was, we was, we've been threatening that sort of performance for a while, you know. We hadn't been maybe scoring as many as we, we could have done, and, and I think against Cheltenham we put that right. During the game, I could see players sort of signaling over to the bench. What can we do? Who am I meant to pick up? Who am I meant to mark? They couldn't get near us on a day. It was a very difficult month. I don't think any of us expected it to be as difficult as it was to have to travel to, to Plymouth, Wimbledon, Mansfield. Really, really hard games. Um, and. You know, in hindsight, I'm guessing a few of us did have one eye on Wembley. Um, I think it did affect us and it was a very difficult month. The Portsmouth home was, was frustrating in the sense that they came to get a nil nil draw and that's what they got. And you know, you can't blame them, they, was, they were down at the bottom of the table, they needed a result. Jervis, well, he has got the better of Evan, it's Jervis! Oh! Cannon back off the post. I just wonder whether Tommy Lee got a fingertip on that and turned it onto the post, but brilliant work from Jervis. That's a brilliant save. It's pretty obvious that Portsmouth have played well in this game so far. I just wonder how they got the energy levels because the way that they're playing is dynamic. It is hard work. Can they keep it up? Here's Roberts. Whisker away. For an hour that morning, a full hour on how teams disrespect Accrington, how they're beat by the time they come here, how they're changing rooms, how everything about Accrington teams that people don't turn up. 
At seven minutes past three, we're two 0 down. That was a good team, one. Chase on here, Roberts. Can he get in? Is he taken down by Bettinelli? Roberts somehow at Chesterfield failed to put the ball in the back of the net. Gary Roberts goes clean through and gets brought down by the keeper. And it's a penalty and send it off and they don't give it. You know, and these are the decisions in games. You know, on the day we weren't good enough to be tackling to. Kick played in all the way in, and Accrington Stanley take the lead. Accrington's a funny place, regardless of people making you aware of of what it's going to be like, how bad the place is, how bad the train, changing rooms are, what what to expect from from members of the team. You can never really prepare yourself. You, you try your best, but it just hits you, and it definitely hit us in the first 10, 15 minutes. Webber's cross, and the challenge made, and a penalty. It was Humphreys who is being penalised. <laughs> Stanley, it's number 13. There's some pressure. Morning fall here for Molyneux. If I hit away, he would have passed to someone, put me in one on one, scored. Um, it wasn't a good day for the club. It was very disappointing. <laughs> to hold our hands up and apologise to the manager, apologise to the fans because we let them down. Um, and I probably would say that was the last time we let them down that season. Again, you have to consider the conditions, how they set up. Um, we couldn't really get our passing game on, it wasn't really fluent. Oh, that's a good turn, skips into space, and it's a brilliant goal for George Frankham and Wimbledon. So from going behind, Oli Banks scored a great goal to equalise, and we can definitely say it's definitely a point earned, another point on the board, and we were sitting in the top three, so it's all very positive. Touch on it, but the follow-up is rammed in by Oliver Banks and Chesterfield are level. They were on a bit of a sticky patch, but it's always difficult, you know, when a team need a result. And I think it was one of the most professional performances of the season. And uh, it just stopped the rot again a little bit, you know, after a couple of draws and a loss at Accrington. Uh, Oxford, Oxford was a big win for us. And headed away by the Ridgeway. Driven back in, oh, good save. Touch there from Ryan, got a chance now. Ryan Williams is in on goal here. Ryan Williams against Tommy Lee. And Lee makes an excellent save. And in all our good wins, Tommy Lee always made good saves. And this is why I always think back to myself, like, because you win, people don't remember Tommy's saves. I do. I remember them all. Gary Roberts, Jay O'Shea in space. O'Shea back into the area once more. Chance for Banks. And Chesterfield have the lead. The Sparrows go in front in the eighth minute of the game. Line. This time it's an outswinging one, but Banks is on the end of it. And a penalty for Chesterfield. A penalty there, some holding in the area. Roberts will strike it. 2 0. Gary Roberts hits double figures for the season. 10 goals for him now. And Chesterfield had a 2 0 lead here. I think Oxford ended up with 8 9 men, whatever it was, looking back. But the other man sent off in the 88th minute and then another one in the 90th minute, whatever it was. So well read by Jimmy Ryan. And Banks is brought down under that challenge with Newey. And I think this could be read for Tom Newey, the Oxford left back.
against uh, Williams, and Roberts goes through. And Michael Range has already been booked. It's all, he's already had a yellow card. This is going to be red as well. And Michael Range is also sent off. Now Doyle. And now a chance for Roberts. Gary Roberts lifts it over the goalkeeper to make it his second goal of the game. And that is the icing on the cake of the day. We put a lot into the Oxford game on the Saturday and to have to travel to, to Plymouth and get ourselves going again and raise our game again. It, w it was tough. Plymouth's a tough place to go. Um, it's so far. And when you're travelling down there on a Tuesday night, it's, it's awful. Alessandra plays it forward, reads on the right side of the penalty, a chance to shoot, and a chance to shoot across Tommy Lee and give Plymouth Argyle the lead. We played well, you know, and I'm not one of these managers because I want to play well and I want to win. But if we play well and don't win, you've got, still got to say we played well. i never seen them when we equalised, which he scored down there, and I think they've scored 30 seconds later. Uh, Roberts fires it in towards the penalty, it's knocked back across goal by Everett, cleared initially, off to Humphreys, this is yes. the chance to it in! And it's a 1-1. And it's a 1-1, 57 minutes gone, cleared long. Reed controls it down the other end, across the right side of the box. Reed goes, Reed shoots, Reed scores. Two for Ruben Reed, and the Spyrites aren't level for five minutes. We got back here, and I'll never forget we landed back outside the stadium at half past five in the morning. And it's a long, long night that you've been beat 2 1, you know, blah, blah. And we're going to Mansfield, and you know, leading into the Mansfield game, it wasn't much in the Mansfield game, but the last 10 minutes we were out on our feet. <laughs> It's a real chance! As close as Mansfield Town have come. Mansfield, ugly team, ugly pitch, ugly side of play. Uh, playing for touch, if you like, playing for throw-ins. A horrible scene. You know, didn't really amount to much. But again, you know, during the latter parts of the game, we actually could have lost it. Um, Tommy made some fantastic saves. And poor finishing that got us a point. for the fans that they, they didn't beat the local rivals but um, it was a game we couldn't lose and we didn't lose and that was important. Bennett now, Bennett with the drive, straight across the face of the goal. A massive game, massive, massive victory, we needed to win, as simple as that, it was a must-win game. Um, the games were counting down thick and fast. Uh, we were running out of games. We needed to get as many points as we can, and, and it was a great opportunity to, to get them. Kearns once more. The short ball through to Doyle this time. Bennett with him. Doyle continues on his own. Doyle towards the back post, and the header is over the line. Jay O'Shea celebrates his goal on 19 minutes and Chesterfield have the lead Jay O'Shea on the edge of the penalty area through for Doyle well saved by Roach punched away by Roach O'Shea with the shot just wide from Jay O'Shea Gary Roberts trying to fashion something on the edge of the area Morsi with the shot Sam Morsi strikes the crossbar Barry Roach beaten obviously we owed more come on from the first game um, and we, we put in a great performance that night. 1-0 uh, was, 
was not the true story of the game because we dominated from start to finish. I, I don't think they had a shot on our goal. Uh, it was that dominating and that convincing. Um, but it was a great win, great three points, and it was on to Wembley from there. Wembley was a magical experience. Um, I remember going sort of two days before, travelled down and having a look at the pitch, and the pitch was stunning, the stadium was stunning. Hey, it's not the best one you're on it, though, is it? <laughs> It, it was more of a let's get down there and get the job done feeling for me. You know, it's, it's a brilliant place to go and win. Uh, it's not so good when you lose. Give them a beep. Oh. You know, I try my best to take as much in as I can. You know, as a manager, and you know, I have to left. I had to leave Armand off the bench, and you know, to see to see a lad visually upset before the game and all the players have gone out, you know, it broke my heart. You know, I see people hurt like that and it hurts me, you know, and that took a little bit of an edge off the old day because I'd forgot what it was like to see people who cared that much. Hi. Sometimes supporters and everyone should see that, and that touched me that day. You know, and I'll always have a soft spot for Hammond now because of that. Because when people care, and I've seen footballers wherever I've been, they don't care. They've got no interest in the club or what goes on around the club. You know, and that day was a massive learning care for me. The day was great, it was special. You know, we played well. Well, Romance has returned to the major cup competitions this season. And that is what the Johnston's Paint Trophy is all about. A chance of a day in the spotlight, an opportunity for dreams to be realised, for magical memories to be created. A Wembley occasion, one to be savoured. The Wembley Walk, a major highlight. a sense of you know we we played really well here um, we did ourselves no harm at all um, obviously the goals were unfortunate I was off the pitch for the first goal which first goal in any game is vital we probably should have had a penalty before that oh, the ball's played in beautifully to feet well for me straight through him there to get a touch on the ball it certainly didn't look like it to concede from two set pieces was was poor from us poor from ourselves really Unfortunately, got picked back, but throughout the game, we actually showed that we was a better side. Here's to Rickwe. Oh, Doyle. Well, suddenly, Chesterfield warming to the task. Oh, to Rickwe's in behind here, and it'll fall beautifully for Morsi. And he's let Peterborough off the hook, massively off the hook. So he's picking up Bostwick here. And in the thick of it, it's in! And it was Presley who rose. Well, they're very, very close now. They can almost reach out and touch it. Well, look back on the day, and you're so proud of Chesterfield's support. You know, I was pleased we scored. I was pleased we scored into our end. <laughs> This is Morsi, 
Luke Bosch will get to the challenge, it's Dale! And Chesterfield right back in it! The Irish eyes of Owen Doyle are smiling! This is Little, that's nice. And on goes Little, it's a terrific run, and penalty at the end of it. It's not nice. You want to go to Wembley and win in front of your family and your friends and your fans. You know, credit to the Chesterfield fans, they're travelling numbers again, which which they did they did all season. But yeah, it's hard, but you know, they're the sort of memories you need to you need to keep hold of and remember the next time we get there we'll, we'll make sure it's us going up the stairs. You know, again the lads come back from Wembley. We had a good trip home. We had an unplanned good trip home, you know, and it was all on the back of now. We've got a job to do and make no bones about it. We all knew and felt that we had that to do. Newport at home was a, was a tough one to take. Uh, we had enough chances in the game to win it and then to concede in the manner we did, it's disappointing. Even loads of O'Shea get the return. And draw in for Ryan. Jimmy Ryan on the edge of the penalty area. Ryan lifts that one in. Oh, yes! Jimmy Ryan with the goal for Chesterfield. up on this near side and it's not going to count the flag went up straight away against Doyle Doyle now look for O'Shea still Owen Doyle oh through for Roberts no flag this time and again the lineman's flag's gone up Danny Kearns just about to celebrate the goal but the lineman again has flagged offside I've never seen the picture and the guy who's had it on the edge of the box and there's five or six of us who've just flung our bodies at the ball and it's gone under everybody in the corner Tommy seen it late um, and that was a real devastating blow, if you like, in the game, which we really felt we needed to win. Out wide to Wilmot on that far side. Wilmot plays the cross in once more, cleaning the penalty area. Lazy off and driven back in again, and Max, Max Porter has given Newport County an equaliser. After that Newport game at home, um, it's the first time really where myself as a leader and as a captain, you know, kind of had to lay it on the line to the lads and say, you know, this is a once in a lifetime thing, to have a chance of winning a title is, is magnificent and we, we can't go under here. There was, you know, rumbles when I was walking around Chesterfield as, with my family that, you know, we were going to bottle it, we were going to you know, not do it, we, we'd gone, we'd finish, we'd end up in the playoffs. And I wasn't having that, I, I wanted to prove everybody that we could do it. Self, Richie, Robbo, the senior players, you know, and the manager left it to him to left it to us to be fair. I had to have a word with the lads and say, you know, this is this is a big thing here. Uh, we've done well getting to Wembley, but our bread and butter is the league. Um, I came here to be a winner, to be a champion. We knew we had to win. A point wouldn't have been good enough. Um, so we dug in, we played some great football, the pitch as well was fantastic, which helps us in our style of play. That's a good run for James, who stayed on side. James! He'll be on Tommy Lee, and Hartley Pool take the lead. To go a goal down, to bounce back, 
and get the comfortable win in the end was, was brilliant and that that's when you really start to believe that you know we're going to win this league. Show good character, um, got a goal before half time and then when Doyle scored the winner we're not still not sure if it was a, a shot or a cross. Oakley sends the delivery in and the header there. Oh, and off Tommy Lee and away off the line by Owen Doyle. The Pro Act now has become such a good place for away teams to come and play. The pitches, a carpet, the stadium's nice. We're playing, they're playing against a very good team, uh, the, probably the best team, in, well, they are the best team in the league. They raised the game. Exeter did that on the day. They played really well. and. You know, we, we were quite up to our 100%, our maximum, but you know, full credit to them, they, they gave us a good game. Circum and Noakley are both either side of him. It's going to be Grimes, though, to strike it, which he does, and he takes a deflection, and it's in the back of the net for Exeter's first goal of the game. I wouldn't say we were too disappointed after the game because we didn't, we didn't play brilliant. I think we huffed and puffed a little bit, and they had a few chances, so... To win away at Hartlepool and then get a draw at home, that's, that's four good points in, in my opinion. Among the defenders, De Riqua. Ball in again, Richards! And Mark Richards is just wide, the ball in from Tenda De Riqua. Morsi. Challenge. Oh, it's red for Sam Morsi. A straight red card for Sam Morsi. He hasn't been booked already. And it's a straight red card for Sam Morsi. It was devastating to be honest because you feel as if you've let everybody down, you know, you let the players down, the staff down, the man who's shown so much faith in me, the fans, you know, of course yourself, you know, let yourself down. Um, but then again, you have to bounce back, you have to remain positive and the quality in the squad, you know, I knew we had more than enough to get the job done. Nondule up for this one. Oh, and a mistake there, a chance here for Doyle, who does go down, and the referee goes to the penalty spot. It's Doyle with the strike. And Chesterfield about level. Owen Doyle is showing a bit of Irish passion there. The ball comes in again from Oakley. The header down, a chance there. Oh, great save by Tommy Lee. The ball stayed in play momentarily, but it's Scott Bennett. Scott Bennett who uh, had the shot. Excellent save from Tommy Lee. The Rick now with a chance to put the crossing, which he does. And Gary Roberts hits the side netting. Nondule couldn't reach the header. And when Gary Roberts came in there at the back post, he could only manage to strike the side netting with it. Tackenham and Redbridge are taking on Chesterfield this afternoon. Chesterfield looking for three points to keep the pressure on Scunthorpe in the League Two title race. Started well here though, Chesterfield. And, oh, the date is still not clear. Chesterfield take the lead, it's Owen Doyle. Winning was everything that game, I think more than any other. Winning was everything we needed to win, regardless of the style. Uh, the pitch was obviously difficult, it was a red hot day. Uh, but we went down there and really dug in and really ground out a, a great victory and we deserve to win on the day. We need to find something in response to Chesterfield this afternoon who come forward in the right hand side of the penalty area. It's a wonderful effort with the left foot. Fantastic attempt that's just gone wide. Still going here is uh, Derikwa. Still going Derikwa. What a goal this would be. He's done well to lay it off to a teammate now as well. And eventually the shot is just straight to Seabright. Oh, what a save from the goalkeeper. 
Roberts found himself in acres of space. But now Dagenham looked to break. End to end at the moment. Oh my goodness, mate. It wasn't the pretty Chesterfield that we normally see. It was the strong, aggressive Chesterfield that we needed to be for that game. And uh, I think we went 4-4-2 that day. Just sense the tension building for both sides. And well, how this game is only 1-0 is beyond me. Richards again. Rico and Doyle caused them all sorts of problems. Um, and to get the victory was, was massively important. We had a team meeting at 12 o'clock at Dagenham. And Jay O'Shea was told within that team that he'll win us the game next week up there. We knew what we wanted to do. Um, we wanted to go and win our last two games to, to be champions. Uh, it was in our hands um, to go to Burton in a massively high pressure game with you know the best away following I'd say I've had in my career, let alone uh, this season. We went in just knowing that all our hard work pre-season, during the season, the highs and lows, it all could come down to this one game to get promoted. Well, oh, Gardner's corner kick coming towards the far post. Well, well, one. Finds it. It's it. We see the crossbar come out. Little oh, twist popping about to the Burton Ross. Nathan Smith. You see the crossbar. Spar right forward again with Gardner. I think Sam Heard got the edit to it. It was a magnificent performance by by ourselves and you know Jay O'Shea in particular, who you know Jay at times was was in and out of the team. He, he struggled with the fact that teams were playing you know, two banks of four and being very defensive. Um, but that day he showed his worth to everybody and no, none of us ever doubted any, any different. He was a, he's a top player and he was magnificent that day. Oh, say on the touchline, find the requip. Back to guard, guard his first time, crossing towards the six yard box. Little bar homeless. It's only fault to resume for it. Up his fault to coach Jay. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! 51st minute goal! We knew what it meant if the scoreline had stayed like that. That was that was all we needed. Um, so when he put it in the back of the net, the, the support, the lads, the bench was all down the touchline. I think he, you know, I think Armand even got a yellow card for over celebrating. But it doesn't matter. I think it's one of those days that everyone should enjoy. Everyone should remember. And certainly for someone at, at my age that's been through. Um, a lot of things in football, I think, to tell the younger ones, it's just to remember days like that because they don't come around a lot and the, everyone has to just take it all in and um, just just enjoy the day. So when Joe then went and got the second goal. It's on the halfway line where Ryan Strong and takes well, it away. Robert's in the way, Sparrow's looking to break. Oh. Nick Foss to Owen Doyle, takes a bubble, Doyle gets towards the touchline. Can Doyle get the crossing and Doyle in the box? He's got to go, yeah! yeah! A deflection off keeper Linus. The Spars are 2 0 up and 12 minutes away from promotion. Burn Albion nil, Spars 2. That day, just everything come together. Our support was fantastic. It was amazing. You know, all around the ground, you felt the will to win. You just felt the energy from us as a club. We needed to get promotion. So when it happened, it was definitely it was the sense of achievement. Yes, we League One, but of course, relief as to going into the final game. Could it be playoffs? Could it be whatever? So it was just a, it was an unbelievable feeling. <laughs> Appreciate that very much, Mr. Burton Albion. Appreciate that very much. Come on, the old needs after the ref to blow the whistle. And the fans are on the pitch, suspected they will be. I'm going to have to stand up because people are in front of me. The Spy Arts are up, full time scoring. Burton Albion nil, Chesterfield two. Jay O'Shea's double puts the Spy Arts into League One. It's a fantastic performance from the Spy Arts. You know, 
all my family, everyone was there, the support, the players played really well. You know, it was just a great day for us all, for myself personally and for the players, the supporters, because for all them emotions we've just spoke about, it was all over. Probably the highlight of my season uh, to go there under the pressure we were under, away from away from home. Burton, very good, very good team, and, and winning that manner. And then uh, you, you know after the game that's guaranteed you place in League One. And, and we celebrated. You know it was it was important that we did that because it's not often you achieve something like that in football. And to do it in the manner we did, uh, yeah, we were all delighted. Start possibly the way you'd have liked it to start on yep, the day. We were awful, Josh. I don't mind you saying it now, Josh, because we won the league. We were poor. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> well, yeah, we didn't start at the best. Thank fine, you, Josh. Yeah, right. In now for Matty Blair. Still Blair. Now Morris back to Blair in the penalty area for Chesterfield. Matty Blair going all the way, and he scored. We didn't get the right first half for whatever reason. We considered a sloppy goal, but. Again, had chances, but we weren't our normal selves. Look, the manager wasn't pleased. We weren't pleased. It was a poor performance on our part, you know, in that first half, but. I think uh, that probably summed the season up in a nutshell, that, that last game, you know. It was so important that we put Fleetwood under more pressure than we were put them under. It was like a testimonial game, it was like a game that meant nothing. We needed to get higher up the pitch. Higher up the pitch, lads like Robert and O'Shea here, yeah. And the emphasis at half time, in quite choice words, was to get higher up the pitch. And, you know, to go on to win the game, it doesn't get no better. Pleased for Hurdy because again Hurdy had to be patient at times. He, he had a great season. Uh, pleased that he got on the score sheet and delighted for Robbo because you know he's our match winner. Humphrey beats Schumacher. Now Ryan. Now Rabbit. Ken comes off Talbot. Third again. Oh, he's got the show! Oh, he's got it over! It's the goal scorer! Gary deserved that, you know, it, it was brilliant for us all season and you, when the ball falls to somebody in that position, you don't want it to fall to anyone else and uh, as it's always a few times since since then, it just started outside the post and it, and it just came round, which, which, you know, that's what he does, he's a fantastic player and uh, when that hit the back of the net and, and you know you've only got 15 minutes to go, you, it, yeah, it's dreamland really. You know, 
for the support and in my opinion on a lovely day the stands full you know people are very proud of where they're from and the history of your own town your own city and you know to win a league for us all was in my opinion it, it, it was just a fantastic day for not just for me you know but for my family my children my missus for everyone <laughs> It's just an elation, you don't know really what you're doing. Um, the celebrations afterwards, when the final whistle went, pitch invasion, um, seeing the teammates getting lifted on shoulders of the supporters, being back in here in the changing room, um, knowing what a successful season it had been, knowing everybody had played their part. world of every single one of them um, and that's that's just not me saying it as their captain I you know I think they're all fantastic lads I've been involved in some good groups in the past um, the Blackpool team that was so successful had a great team spirit but this is on par if not better than that team spirit <laughs> fans have been with us through all the ups and downs so it was awesome to win the league in our home turf to cap off an unbelievable season. As they say, that is a wrap. That's all you need, and you're not having that. <laughs>